In today's video, we're going to talk about the biggest mistake that I see beginners and intermediate artists make with watercolour pencils. Welcome back to my channel. If we have not met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour as well as drawing tutorials, mixed media, even a little bit of business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing and make at least one free video a week here on YouTube. So let's not clickbait you or keep you waiting. What is the biggest mistake that I see people making with watercolour pencils? It's using the water in the wrong way. So if you've just started out using watercolour pencils, maybe you've progressed on from drawing and you think it might be sort of a good way of getting into painting, and of course it really is, then the chances are that you've applied your watercolour pencils to the paper and used some water to drag across the colour. Sounds like the right thing to do. But of course you may have noticed that you're ending up with a rather scruffy looking result and that you're also ending up with a lot of drawing lines where perhaps on the image that you're looking at you can see beautifully faded edges such as you might get in a watercolour painting but you're not achieving these with watercolour pencils. That's what we're going to fix today. And we're even going to paint a little flower whilst we do it. As we go through I'll tell you how you can get hold of the photograph that I'm using if you want to paint along with me or you can just watch the tutorial because we are going to fix this issue of not blending correctly when using your watercolour pencils. So first of all I'll take you very quickly through the materials that I'm going to use and explain why quality is important when it comes to watercolour pencils. Far more important to have good quality pencils even if it's just a handful than have a set of 40 rubbish ones because it is going to affect how you apply the water and the results that you get and most of all the vibrancy. So materials, let's talk about the photograph first. This is a photograph that I downloaded from a copyright free website and I'm going to place it in my Facebook group for you. So the Facebook group just has the same name as this YouTube channel. I'll also put a link to it in the description of this video. Click through, join the group and then if you go to the top of the group, if you click media and then click albums, you will find an album that is entitled all YouTube tutorials and you'll find the photograph in there. Now I wish I could pin that album to the top, make it the first one so it's easy for you but Facebook is um, so far just not letting me do that. So the way you find it is that the title of that particular album is in all capitals. There are lots of other albums in there as well with copyright free photographs that you can use that have been donated kindly by members of my community and some from me as well. So that's how you get the photograph if you want it. The paper I am on today is Fabriano Artistico Extra White, it's £140 and it has a knot surface. So what's the best paper for doing watercolour pencils on? Basically you must have a watercolour paper, not a sketch paper because the rule is if the paper's going to get wet you need to have a watercolour paper. Preferably you would stretch the paper, I have not had time to do that today. So we've just pinned it down. And I personally prefer to use the knot surface with the slight bump. Now here's the difficulty with watercolour pencils. Pencils of any kind apply best on a slightly smoother surface and within watercolour paper that would be a hot press paper. However, the water will spread the pigment out better on a knot surface. So there's your dilemma. Pencils work best on smooth. But the actual watercolour pigment when wet works better on bumpy. So I would say pick a watercolour paper with a slight bump to the surface but don't go as far as something like a rough paper because you're gonna find it really hard to apply your pencils smoothly. I will be using mostly these uh, Caran d'Ache watercolor pencils. They're my favorites at the moment, but if there should be a particular color that I need and I haven't got it in here, then I do also have some other brands of pencils, particularly a lot of Derwent pencils. Now this video is not long enough for me to discuss all of the brands of watercolour pencils but you just want to sketch a little bit of your watercolour pencil on the paper and if you can barely get any pigment out of it, if it barely spreads across then you should consider buying better pencils. It's better to have a set of eight good pencils than to go for one of these mega cheap sets where you get 60 different colours because the pigment is the bit that costs money. So you get these sets and they have beautiful cases and they look really nice and they have all these different colours and the pencils look really smart and then you find they're just disappointing to use. As I said, there are other videos on YouTube not made by me that compare brands of watercolour pencils. There are well over 20 brands of watercolour pencils. There may even be over 50 brands. I bought these ones last year and they've been really good. In order to do my outline, I'll be using this Faber-Castell 5B pencil. I prefer to use one of the B grades, one of the soft pencils because it'll leave less marks on the paper and erase more easily. 
Now many people say, well, just do the outline in the watercolour pencils and then everything dissolves, but it's not really as simple as that because I find that if you outline in watercolour pencils, and I'm not saying don't do it, if it suits you, go ahead, it's absolutely fine. But for me, I find that it leads to there being a slight scruffiness to the outline. And you've always got the problem of the colour itself, whatever colour you're using, slightly polluting the colours that you mix. So I prefer to use a graphite pencil, but it's not the end of the world if you want to use the watercolour pencils to do the outline as well. To clean up that pencil, I'm going to use this scruffy old piece of putty rubber. So this is a part of a Winsor & Newton medium putty rubber. I actually prefer the De La Roni firm putty, but I've not been able to get it here in the UK for a few weeks. This one's good too. I never need my putty rubbers. I just think it makes such a mess of them and kneading all of the muck into them. It doesn't clean them at all, does it? It just picks up all the muck and shoves it into the middle of the eraser. I prefer just to get mine, cut them into little pieces like this. And then if they get too dirty, I'll just trim the outside off with a scalpel. In order to spread the water, I'll be using a couple of paintbrushes like this. I've got a larger one here and a smaller one. And these are synthetic brushes by Jackman's Art Materials here in the UK. I do have a set of brushes with them that includes two brushes like this and a flat brush. You'll find details in the video description, but other than that, I just prefer a synthetic brush. I happen to be one of those weird freaky vegan people, so I don't use any animal hair. And frankly, I just find synthetic brushes have a bit more spring to them anyway. And that's everything we need to start working today. Now this isn't a drawing tutorial. Nevertheless, we're going to do a quick drawing of our flower. It's a really simple thing, isn't it? I'm going to give you some drawing tips and small flowers like this are ideal if you're a beginner and just starting out because you can't really get it too far wrong. As I always say, the flower's mother doesn't need to recognise it, it only needs to look like a flower. Now this flower is a very simple shape. A technique I like to use when drawing flowers is sort of an outline technique, some people call it the envelope technique, whereby I draw a box or more accurately a multi-sided straight edged area and then find the center point. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to use actually a ballpoint pen because it's so much easier for you to see on camera. And basically what you do is this, you look at your flower and you think to yourself, well, you know, if I put a box around it, how would it look? And you can see we've got a slight downward slope at the top there. The sides on this side come almost straight down. I think that's a little higher actually. And then this side comes out like this and then something like this. And we've got a shape like this going on. Then you look for the center point of the flower and here it is around here. And you think to yourself, if this is in that box, whereabouts is the center? It's not halfway up, is it? You know, it's much closer to the bottom than it is to the top, probably two thirds of the way down. And you ask yourself, is it over to the left or to the right? It's definitely further over to the right because look how much less gap there is here. So we can say it's about a third of the way up and it's over to the right and then you place that center point in and from there you will be able to place your flower roughly in this box that you've drawn and this can be used with pretty much any species of flower in order to get your proportions right doesn't matter if you go slightly outside of the box as you're drawing it's just meant to be a guideline I've got less gap here so I think what I would do is perhaps lift that one up a little bit of course, when you're working in pencil, you can adjust things easily. And this is how we're going to draw our flower. And then we can look at some of these little marks and things that we've got. And we see that they're all come from the center. You also want to make sure that any part of the flower that ends up here, it's heading towards that center. So you need to make sure that if you carried on that line, would it end up going to that center point? Or would it end up going somewhere completely different? Because all flowers or florets, if they're on a multi-headed flower, they all go to a little center point and that's what's gonna make your flower look realistic. And this is the process that I'm going to use to draw my flower. Now let's get started on the bit you've been waiting for. Let's apply our watercolor pencils. I'm gonna show you the correct way of using the water so that you avoid hard edges except where you need them. I'm also going to give you a really simple technique for getting those beautiful little marks on our pansy. Once you see how it's done, you're going to find it so much easier. So my drawing is complete and I've chosen the colours that I'm going to use. So within any piece of art, you want to work within a limited palette. So not a specific number, but you don't want to just grab every single pencil that you've got and just keep chucking them randomly on your paper because you're not going to have something that sort of hangs together and has a certain look to it. 
So here I've got a nice bright yellow. It's a little bit warmer than a lemon. I've got a purple. I've got something similar to an ultramarine blue. I've got kind of a bright yellow green and I've got a darker green. That should be everything I need. Now let's talk for a moment about color opposites. So purple and yellow are color opposites. And this means that they'll look lovely next to each other. They'll really sort of sing next to each other. But if we mix them together, they're going to go very muddy. So that's something to be careful of. We can, of course, use this if we want to make a neutral. So what you've got within the purple and the yellow here is you've got all three primaries. So you've got yellow and then within the purple, you've got red and blue. So when we mix them together, we'll get a gray or a brown. And I'm pretty certain that with the yellow and the red being probably in higher quantity than the blue within this mix, we'll get something a bit more brownish. Let's have a look. There we are. So we're starting to get this brown color. Now, if I wanted to make more of a gray, I could put a bit more of the purple in and add some blue. And we should start to push things to more of a neutral. What I've got here is kind of a gray green. We may actually use a little bit of that color to put a bit of shadow on the white petal. You don't want to overdo it. We could make this more gray by adding more blue in, but actually a greenish gray works really well as a shadow on a flower. You never want to go into browns because then you make your flower look like it's dead. So you can see that from these colors here, we have everything we need. So one thing I didn't mention that you need to have in your materials is you need to have either some paper towel like this or a piece of cotton rag in order to wipe your brush on if you've got too much water on it. Here in the UK, we call this kitchen paper, which is very strange because even if we take it into the bathroom or the sitting room, it's still kitchen paper, but it's basically paper towel. And just like when using watercolors, we're going to work from light to dark. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put my yellow on. So we're looking at applying it evenly. Don't press too hard. You don't want to burnish the paper and dent it because that's going to give you problems later on. So applying plenty, but without pressing too hard, I'm going in both directions. At the moment, we've got a little bit of the paper grain showing, which is always going to happen on a textured surface, but it should neatly even out as we apply the water. I think I've actually applied a bit more yellow around here than is on the photograph, but never mind. Now, if you're new to this medium, your instinct would be to place the water on here and pull down in this direction. But what that's gonna do is it's gonna leave you those hard edges that we're looking to avoid. So instead, I'm going to put the clean water here on the bottom part of the flower petal, and I'm going to take it up to meet the yellow. And what this will do is it'll start to activate that yellow, but we'll get a much softer edge. I'm gonna clean my brush, dry it slightly, and just sweep up like this, continually going up, so we're not spreading that yellow down across the whole petal. I think I've already got it about double the size it is in the picture, but I'm quite happy with it because look, I've got this lovely, soft, faded out edge. At this point in the video, can I ask you please quickly just to click that like button. You probably have just forgotten to do it until this point in the video because you were so engrossed in everything I'm doing. We'll get back to that just in a second. But clicking like, sharing, subscribing or leaving me a comment helps my YouTube channel to grow. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me here on YouTube. Now let's get back to making our lovely pansy. Now, as I said, I'd like a little bit of shadow on that petal. So I'm gonna take my blue my yellow and my purple and I'm going to make a little bit of color on the paper here. I want it to be more neutral so I'm going to add more yellow and more blue till we get it right and you can see I've actually mixed up enough here to be able to use it as paint. What I'm going to do now is just place it around the outside edge just a very tiny amount like this. The paper's still damp so it's going to bleed in slightly and then whilst it's wet, I'm going to actually start adding in some of that purple and blue down the bottom. And I'm drawing straight onto wet paper here. I'm going to use a damp but not wet brush just to activate that color a little bit. I think I'd like some more blue on here. I want to get a real crisp edge on this, so I'm going to Go right around the edge with a fairly sharp pencil. Keep teasing this color upwards, but not working on it for too long. And whilst the paper is still wet with a very sharp pencil, I'm going to put in 
some of these markings on the petal. We're just going onto damp paper here, which will help to release some of the pigment. Just adding in some purple. And at this stage, I'm going to let that petal dry. What we want to do now is get these uh, petals here. So you see that they've got sort of blue here that fades in from the white, and then they've got purple towards the edge. So I'm going to shade them accordingly and then take the water in. But again, we're going to be very careful about the direction from which we apply the water. Now, after I turned the camera off, I did put a little more dark around the base of this petal here, if it's looking a little stronger to you. So what I'm going to do here is start shading. And again, I'm just shading lightly. Try not to get any noticeable lines here. So you can go in both directions. We see the paper grain is just grabbing the pigment. And just have a look to see whereabouts it's purple and whereabouts it's blue. So we're gonna add this in here go onto the blue now and there's much less of that it's lighter so I'm going to be lighter with my pencil here we've got some stronger tones at the edge and on those markings but this is fine make sure at this point that you're using some clean water don't be using any yellow water because you'll dull down the blue and the purple I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush this time because I'm working in a larger area and again, I'm going to start in the center with the clean water so we reserve the light areas and so that we get a blended edge. And then I'm going to come up like this. I'm holding my hand in sort of odd angles here so that you can see on camera. But if you're doing this at home, do turn your paper so that you can reach more easily. And we're just going to come up like this. And look how effective that is of maintaining this soft white blended area. From there, with a freshly sharpened pencil, I can get that darker pigment at the edges. Try not to let it look like it's been outlined all the way, but there is nevertheless a darker edge, at least towards the outside of the flower here. And then while the paper is still wet, we're gonna come up and get those very strong markings in. And the water that's on the paper will help to release the pigment. So I've done the other one in the same manner. Now I'm just going to use the purple just to put in a tiny bit of detailing around this center part. And there's a tiny little bit of shadow on the yellow so we can use that purple to blend in and just to get a touch of detail in. Again, I'm going to let it dry before I go onto the petals at the back and the greens. So it's time to do these petals at the back and they're much darker and they don't really have any pure white on. So I'm going to shade across the whole petal. And I'm going a little bit darker towards the top and the outside edge where the petal itself is darker. Now, because we don't need to preserve any white and because I don't want to drag the darker pigment all down to the middle, I'm going to start at the lightest area and go upwards and outwards, just spreading the water up and across. You want to move your brush in little circles so that you can just agitate the pigment and smooth it out as much as possible. Now I can go straight in with my pencil and get those darker lines on. If they're not showing up as much as you would like, then you can go onto the blue. Go a little bit darker around the edge as well. I can do that with the blue or with the purple, making sure the pencil is sharp enough and working in to that damp paint. I also want to make sure I go darker behind this petal at the front. Now it's all still a little damp at the moment and of course I can go over certain areas later if I want to add more pigment but be aware that whatever you've added previously will sort of re-wet and so things like the yellow could end up getting very uh, very polluted if you go over the top of it but certainly you can work over the top in places and put more pencil on but what I'm going to do first of all is put a little bit of background in going to do the stem last because that's darker so again going light to dark what I'm going to do is I'm going to start shading in with this green and then in places I'm going to add some yellow as well this will play off against the yellow in the flower and just add a little bit of freshness as it blends in with the greens and again we're going to work the water outside in to get almost a vignette type effect but first of all I'll get on and do the rest of the shading 
So I've sketched all the way around. What you want to do at this point is make sure you have two water jars because we're going to put clean water around the outside and bring that water in. Now, in theory, we could put the water all the way round in one go, but the problem is that by the time you got round to the area where the water was, it would probably be dry. So instead, we're going to start somewhere there's a natural break, which is where this stem is here. And we're going to start putting the water on and working up so that we get a nice blended effect. I'm not going to over blend the yellow and the green because otherwise it would just end up as one big colour and I want a bit of variation. So I'm going to use the big brush to apply the water and the small brush to blend. Starting down the bottom here, I'll put some water on. You want to take it significantly further out than where you're working. Otherwise, it's easy to go off the edge of the water. And then I'm just going to start blending like this, working my way round. Be careful when working next to dark colours like this blue and purple because dark colours do bleed easily. And then I'm just gonna come up here until I hit the water and continue all the way round with the same technique. Once you've gone all the way round, you'll notice there are one or two what I would call islands of colour, sort of in between these little gaps here that weren't reached when you went round the outside. So you can just fill those in separately now. And all you need to do is just take a damp paintbrush into them and agitate that colour. The only thing I have left to do now is to put the darker stem in and maybe make one or two adjustments to the petals and tidy things up. But at this stage, I'm going to let this background dry. Now, don't be fooled by the fact that I can edit this video, so it will only seem like a second to you. But believe me, I am giving it a significant amount of time to get completely dry. So my background is dry. See how bumpy my paper is? This is why I usually, for my own work, work on stretched paper. I'll leave a link to a video in the description of this video that will show you how to stretch your paper. It's really fast and easy and it will ensure that each time your paper dries, it dries flat. Now I'm going to put my dark stem in here so the background is dry and I'm coming in like this. What I want to do here is I want to have darker colour towards the outside edge and then I want to have lighter colour towards the middle. I can even use some yellow if I want to. What this does is it gives the stem more of a three-dimensional look and then very carefully working from the inside, blending those colours together until we get a nice looking stem. That's not quite dark enough for me. So I'm going to just work in a little bit more pencil and working onto wet like this helps your pencil to release more pigment. Now I want it to look blended, not like there's too much of an outline there. So I can continue to work and soften that with my brush. Now at this stage, everything's finished, but I just want to see if I need to do a few finishing touches. I might sharpen up some edges. What I'll do there is I'll sharpen my pencil, my watercolour pencil, so it's really sharp, and then just shade in and take a little more water over. You want to be careful. There are areas that I wouldn't adjust. For example, I could go on top of these little lines here, but I wouldn't want to put water across the whole of this bottom petal because I would lose the bright yellow. The same with the background. But I could, for example, and I probably will put a little more colour on these petals here. That'll just make it look a little bit more dramatic. So at this point, you can make any finishing touches. I'll put a picture up at the end so you can see the finished result. So do let me know in the comments if you found this video useful. If there are any other issues you're having with watercolour pencils or watercolours or drawing that you would like me to address here on YouTube, then let me know that as well. If you've been watching me today and you're thinking, well, she looks a little bit different, but I can't put my finger on it. I broke my glasses and I'm having to wear an old pair. So I may not be clumsy with a paintbrush, but I'm extremely clumsy when walking around my house. I actually knocked these off of the bathroom shelf. Couldn't see what I was doing properly because I wasn't wearing my glasses. Anyhow, if you've enjoyed this tutorial today and you enjoy doing watercolour pencils and you really love flowers, I've got a full course that takes you through eight full length watercolour pencil flower tutorials. I'll leave a link to all my online courses in the description of this video. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.